the ability in the household and I think that is critical for people. Thank you for joining us today and I hope to see you again at our future events. Good evening everyone. Uh, I would like to begin by respectful acknowledging the Gadigal people of the Aura Nation as the traditional owners and custodians of the land on which we stand. We pay our respect to their elders, both past and present. Before I begin, I would like to thank Susan Chalar, who is here, yeah. uh, com uh, Community Correctional Officer, uh, Department of Justice, Community Corrections, and also an affinity volunteer for being generous sponsor of this event. Uh, hello everyone, and welcome to Affinity Lunchtime Lecture. My name is Ernest Kulausovic, and I'm a school, a school chaplain at the Department of Education and Communities of New South Wales, and at the same time, an affinity volunteer. For those who have never attended an affinity event before, let me briefly introduce you to the organization. Affinity was formed by a group of young Muslims in 2000. Their aim is to promote multiculturalism, foster intercultural and interfaith dialogue by building bridges between different groups in the society. Uh, to give you a brief idea on the wonderful work uh, that Affinity does, uh, they have put together a short recap video of their events in 2018, which uh, we would like to share with you now. great career and it's wonderful to see them in the context of a great organization, Affinity. First of all, I'd like to thank our sponsors here, especially uh, Mr. Ahmed Polat. Thank you so much. Thank you too to the Foundation uh, for the opportunity to be here. Faith is so profoundly important for our development and humanitarian work. Because we've got some expertise here uh, that is, uh, when it's brought together, is extremely valuable. So I asked the Vice President Global of Education for Microsoft why. And those are the values that I would continue uh, to advocate being taught in law schools in this country. Uh, from a UN report describes Yemen as now the world's worst humanitarian crisis. Thank you all for, um, for being here. Thank you, Ahmed, and uh, the Affinity team uh, for allowing me to, to speak, ladies and gentlemen. It's an absolute honour to be here tonight to help launch an exciting new lecture series focused on young people. Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, Barack and the Affinity Intercultural Foundation, um, I'd like to acknowledge the fantastic work that you do in the community and um, bringing different cultures and people of different religious backgrounds together. I think it's fantastic. How human rights safeguards children and young people. This is indeed a commendable goal and I'm delighted to be here today to be part of that dialogue. In my view, Affinity is doing excellent work to inform and advance multicultural Australia to keep peace in this country. Congratulations to Affinity. Thank you, Affinity, for this wonderful opportunity. I, with Sev, laud the work of Affinity. Uh, there is no other organization working in the field of interreligious relation that does it the way they do it and promote actual encounter of an ordinary sort between people of all sorts of diversities. I think it's heartwarming. It's one of the few things in life that really continue to give me hope and joy. So what then I believe is that this identity politics to a large extent in India has not become obstacle for the development of democracy, but rather it has enriched the democracy. My day is very focused on thinking about that. Uh, we have, so we have a news conference at nine o'clock and then at half past two, which is the afternoon one is very much looking through to those evening digital sessions, but also of course the newspaper. Uh, can I just firstly just to say thank you to Affinity for the invitation to come along today. It's a great pleasure to be here this morning and obviously following in some very 
esteemed company. So it's a, it's, a, it's a great privilege for me to be here, also to acknowledge my parliamentary colleague, Jenny Beyong. It's fulfilling to an extent, but there's got to be something that's greater than that. And that's how I see my contribution into Affinity and what Affinity does. So Affinity stands for promoting multiculturalism, stands for promoting interfaith dialogue, stands for promoting a good things in our community. Our speaker tonight asked me, um, as we were talking before, so are you involved with this organisation? And I said, yes I am, because I believe in what they do. And I'm very proud of them. I'm proud to be on the board. I want to thank Ahmed and your team for um, inviting uh, me to be along tonight. I have been here before and I've enjoyed it. This is probably my third time. And, and like Mary said, you know, it's that, and I think somebody actually on the DVD said it's that opportunity for people who we live everyday lives just to be together and actually get to know each other and um, see each other as people first and foremost. So it's a really amazing thing that you're doing. Thank you so much. I think Affinity is a great organisation. I was going to wander around and talk, but I realised you only get to be on the video if you have the Affinity sign behind you. So I'm going to stay right in front of it. Sport is one of those um, codes that binds us in, in ways that are really quite significant. It also is a subject of deep and passionate division, and here I must declare first. <laughs> <laughs> the academies are a program to support and empower Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students to take control of their future through in-school and after-school support, and we are so proud of our contribution to helping improve the educational outcomes for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities of Western Sydney. And I've seen this uh, networking non-for-profit organisation go from its humble beginnings, working with the grassroots of Australia, and to now we, we are creating dialogue with all Australians from all walks of life. And I'm very glad that Affinity has brought us together and brought us together with you. Thank you all very much for coming. I pay my respects to the indigenous people of our continental country uh, and I pay my respects to uh, all the people who are connected with affinity. And I think if Ataturk were around today, he would thoroughly approve people reaching out, uh, seeking to understand each other and in particular in countries of the book. But we must be vigilant all the time to protect our human rights and of all our sisters and brothers in this community. Many thanks to Affinity for inviting me to come along and talk to you about probably my favourite topic to talk about, which is the Anthropocene. And I think we've seen two diverse law schools here. It's important that um, law schools are different uh, and in some respects that they stick to their knitting, that they, they deal with what they're most expert at. Creating better cohesive relationships and really making it a safe and I think a very happy place to live. And I think it gels very nicely with Ahmet's affinity theme because it's so related. It's, it's about restoring and promoting, I think, strong and healthy relationships throughout the community. What we tried to do at the Bangsam Poetry Slam and what we've been successful in doing is helping people find their stories and, and express themselves in a way that is cathartic for them. Once again, thank you for attending today. I hope to see you next time. Thank you so much. Lovely day. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, these are all cousins, by the way, from Ahmed Pollard. Uh, let's put our hands together again for Ahmed Pollard and his team. Uh, there is uh, incredible stories that, uh, that were mentioned here on this video, but please, uh, this is not in the text, but please go on YouTube if you want to rewatch them again. Uh, there are incredible speakers talking about many things in, uh, in our society, but the main one is multiculturalism, dialogue, interfaith and intercultural. Um, now I would like to introduce today's facilitator, uh, Omar Dabash. I tried to pronounce his name correctly, so I asked him for his pronunciation. Uh, he is uh, an award-winning journalist for SBS World News, uh, focused on both national and international news and issues. Born and raised in Sydney, Omar has worked at numerous Australian and international media organisations, including 10 News, Sky News and News Corp. Uh, two outstanding stories for Omar during his time at SBS are following the 
Donald Trump uh, campaign during the uh, 2016 U.S. Presidential, presidential election and covering the 2018 Thai cave rescue. This is something that many of us have witnessed. Uh, he was selected to participate in a CNN Journalism uh, Fellowship at the Ward headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia. Proud of his Syrian heritage, we are also proud of your heritage, uh, Omar is passionate about foreign affairs, multiculturalism, and promoting cultural and social unity. Please join me in welcoming Omar to the lectern. <laughs> 